Um, hi, my name is Alex Yip uh, from VMware. I work on Congress. Um, welcome to our hands-on. Um, today I'm going to go through a few slides just to make sure that everyone's up to speed on kind of what Congress is, uh, what it looks like inside, and what you can do with it. And then we'll move on from there to a hands-on uh, that we have set up for you guys today. All right, so, <clears throat> so one of the first questions that comes up when you talk about Congress and policy is, what do we mean by policy? The word's kind of generic, so it's, uh, it's better to just go through and, and describe what it is that, that we do mean. Um, so for us, Congress means you know, an individual's thoughts and ideas about how their data center is supposed to behave. And different people, different groups may have different ideas about what that policy should mean for their data center. So for example, uh, the security team. Security team might say, you know, I want to make sure that all uh, VMs that are accessible by the internet have port 80 blocked. You know, I, not, I don't want to allow any access or connections through port 80 because of whatever, you know, maybe they have SSL uh, policies in place. Um, the administrators may have a different policy. For example, you know, they might say, OK, I only want prod users to be able to own prod jobs so that you know, we don't have any mistakes about uh, what's running as prod or what's running as dev in case someone wants to delete a job. Um, business ops might have something else. You know, they might say, oh, OK, I want to make sure that all the idle machines are shut down or that, uh, and, or that machines are not really idling much because uh, that's a waste of money and waste of energy. Uh, you know, similarly, legal teams might have completely different types of policies, like all German data must reside within the boundaries of Ge Germany itself. And so uh, the idea behind Congress is to take all of these policies and, and put them in one place, and then use those policies to impose uh, the, the individual's desires and thoughts about policy onto the OpenStack data center itself. Um, so, so what does Congress do? It takes that policy and it actually is able to do several things. Uh, these are three things that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first is monitoring. So monitoring means uh, looking at the state of the data center and comparing it to the policies and making sure that all the policies are followed by the data center. The second is proactive enforcement, in which the, uh, the Congress system is actually preventing violations from happening. And it can do that by acting as a gatekeeper to change requests to the data center. And finally, uh, reactive enforcement. And this is a, a case in which Congress is actually making changes itself. Whenever it sees a violation, it should, uh, in reactive cases, it will know via you know, people writing policy how to fix those violations and to reverse those violations on its own. Um, so before I go and I'm not going to talk about these in more detail with more examples, but first I want to give an overview of the architecture of Congress. What does it look like inside? So in this picture, we have uh, this, this big blue rectangle. And that's Congress. It consists of mostly two types of components inside. The, the top one you'll see is called the policy engine. And that's where the various admins and users can insert their policy. They'll say, OK, Congress, here's my policy. And that's where that policy lives in the policy engine. That's where it's actually doing the, the rule checking. Uh, and on the bottom half of the Congress box, you can see a, n a number of drivers. You know, we have Neutron, Nova, Cinder, Swift. And a driver is really a, a kind of specialized piece of code that interacts with each of the data center services that you see below in the small blue boxes. So Neutron has a Neutron driver. Nova has a Nova driver, et cetera. And what's actually happening here is that each of those drivers is reading the state of the data center service. You know, the Nova driver is saying, hey, Nova, can, I, can you give me a list of all the hosts? Give me a list of their, uh, you know, the VMs living on those hosts and all the uh, kind of associated metadata about those servers. And it's giving it to the policy engine in the form of tables. Um, you know, much like a SQL database, these tables describe the state of the data source. And, and given that state, pol the policy engine can read that, those tables, and it can actually uh, try to understand the state of the data center, and that way it can in, in that, ca that way it can do those policy checks right there. Uh, so let's go through an example of how monitoring works in this world. Uh, so let's say the policy we have that we want to work with says, okay, no server should have more than 20 VMs, and maybe we want to do this for uh, latency requirements or quality of service. Um, and so what does that mean? So so Congress in this blue box is going to read all the, that data that it needs from Nova, because that's kind of all, all 
the only uh, source of data for this particular policy. And the policy is going to check. You know, it's going to go through all the servers, and it's going to count up all the VMs in each of the servers and make sure it doesn't exceed the, the limit of 20. And so Congress will either say, OK, the, all the policies are OK. Everything is looking good. Or if you have a server that has exceeded the quota or, or this policy, then the policy engine will say, hey, there's a policy violation. Uh, there's more than 20 VMs on this server. And it's going to notify the admin who can then go and fix that uh, explicitly by himself. Uh, so the second case of, so, so that, that's a kind of a brief description of how monitoring works. The second uh, type of implementation we want to talk about is proactive enforcement. And this is where Congress can actually gate API calls and make sure that the, policy, the, the data center stays within its uh, constraints, uh, stays within its valid pol uh, policy. So in this case, we're talking about policy in which e each VM must have a network ACL. You know, so this is pretty generic and, and doesn't really mean anything, but it gives an idea of how this policy is, how Congress works. And so um, uh, what can happen is the admin, admin or, the ad, or the system that's accepting API calls for, to make changes into the data center will say, hey, Congress, I'm, I want to delete this ACL. This is probably prompted by an admin or a user or something that's trying to make changes to their network. Saying, hey, Congress, can I delete this ACL rule? And uh, what happens is Congress can go and it can kind of pretend that it's making this change. So it's like, OK, uh, if I delete this ACL rules, i got to run through the policies that I have in the policy engine and make sure there are no new violations that happen as a result of this change. Uh, and so Congress can say, yes, it's safe. I, I simulated this, this change to the ACL rule. And you know, this particular network or this particular VM ha already has 10, uh, 10 um, ACL rules. And so deleting one doesn't cause a violation of this policy. You know, on the other hand, you know, if the server has only one remaining, only one ACL rule remaining, then removing that rule will actually cause a violation, and Congress will say, "Hey, no, that's that's going to cause a violation," and then the admin can, can will realize, "Oh, oh, maybe I can't make this change." It's very much like a permission check that you might uh, have in your OS. You know, am I permitted to open this file with write permissions? That's the kind of idea that uh, this proactive enforcement is going after. And so the third way that Congress implements policy is in this reactive way. And this is this, uh, where the policy engine is actually making changes to the data center itself. So if we revisit this policy that we mentioned just before, you know, each VM must have a network ACL. Well, and, and oh, you can see in this picture in the center on the right-hand side, you know, we have a bunch of servers, and there's ACLs attached to them. Now what happens if someone goes and adds a new, uh, adds a new VM? Well, if it doesn't have an ACL, that causes a violation. And this is something that Congress can detect uh, soon after that the VMs are added. And then if, if we have a reactive enforcement policy, Congress can actually say, hey, I'm going to add these ACL rules to this VM because, uh, because of that violation. Now we can go and fix it. So that's kind of the three main ways that Congress uh, can implement the policies that it has in this policy engine. Um, and, and at this point, you might be wondering, OK, now how do I write policy in Congress? And at a high level, w w you can write policy in a language called Datalog. And, and kind of the overall idea here is that there are tables, like I described, that were coming from the data sources. Uh, policy rules, or Datalog rules, take those inputs in the field form of tables to produce new tables. And you can kind of do this over and over until you get to, uh, or there's a special table called the error table or warning table you may have heard before. And if we populate the error or warning table given these rules, then that's essentially telling Congress that there is a violation. So in this case, uh, P is a, the resulting table, is the output. It's a new table. And it's derived from input tables Q and R. So you can imagine Q and R coming from Nova or Neutron. And P could be the error table, or it could be an intermediate table on its way to becoming a, a violation in the error table. And so um, to make this more concrete, uh, we'll, we're going to go through this policy um, 
where each VM needs to be connected to, that is connected to the internet, needs to have a security group or be in a security group. And so here we have the error, which is the output of this rule, is derived from whether the device ID and port ID is connected to the internet, whether or not it has a security group, and, and we're, join, uh, we're connecting or kind of joining this with a server table from the Nova driver, and also the, U, the Keystone driver to give us the list of email addresses so that we know who to talk to when there is a problem. And there's also this other intermediate, intermediate table has security group, which we use in the above rule, just to illustrate the example of uh, creating intermediate tables along the way to producing these violation tables. Um, so uh, for the rest of this hands-on, we're going to be focusing on one particular policy, which is that no virtual machine may be connected to the internet and also allow ingress traffic on TCP port 80. Um, this is a kind of example where, I, I think I mentioned this already, where if uh, you have, uh, where the admin wants to say, okay, we can have VMs that are connected to the internet, but we want, don't want to allow unsecured traffic, so we're only going to allow uh, people to connect on port 443 instead of port 80. And this particular example uses three data sources, Nova, Neutro, Neutron, and Keystone. So with that, I want to switch gears. Uh, there are instructions for the hands-on at this website. Um, I'll be around. Um, I have a few, uh, few other guys from the team here. Tim and Aaron and Pete are over in the corner over here. So if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, feel free to ask us. You know, we'll be happy to help. All right.